Hello, my friends. It's your buddy Phil here, project management trainer and coach. Today, I would like to expose the fraud, the scams that's going on on the web. There are a lot of scams going on, my friends, that you need to be aware of. And the most current one that I've experienced is on the screen here. It's an email from a malicious individual trying to mask as Stripe. So if you have a Stripe account, you may almost fall into this trap because it's very nicely done. And, you know, it's a bad, bad thing, but it's done very professionally. It looks very similar to the actual Stripe organization. So it's an email that says, no action is required on your part, but we wanted to let you know that for the first time, Stripe has blocked a likely fraudulent payment on your, then they mention the name of the account. This is only a first time notification. We won't email you about this again in the future. Stripe Radar evaluates payments across Stripe's entire network in real time. By default, we block high risk payments such as the payment noted in this email to help keep your disputes rate low. Then it says, view payment in Stripe dashboard. This is where the harm has been planted in, right here. So if you make the mistake of clicking on view payment in Stripe, you'll come across a convincing looking link but for those who know how the internet addresses work, starting with a 59.stripe.com is tantamount to you realizing this is not Stripe. It's not a Stripe.com. It's a pre-name like 59 dot stripe and it has a very long string of characters all sorts of weird characters after and if you make the mistake of clicking on this it is not taking you to stripe it is taking you to a different website where your stripe information will ultimately be harvested so I wanted to alert you, my friends, to this scam. And this is just one of the many that exist. They cloak the language, sound professional, and tell you this is a financial institution. It could be a bank. It could be a digital financial institution and others. Don't click on any email, any email that says view payment on the website on this website or go to this website to see your information or go to this website to confirm your information those are all fake okay you should be very weary of these emails that come from so-called financial organizations because most of the time they are actually fraudulent. So an email about fraud is likely to not be picked up as fraud, you see, but it's an email about fraud that is a scam. They wanna scam you, spoof you into putting your actual information in, and then they can suck money at services and various things from your account. Beware. That's the main purpose of this video today, to warn you. Now, to go a little bit further, I don't mean to freak you out, but it's important that we understand these kind of scams exist everywhere. And they're known as phishing scams. And this is where these fraudsters attempt to trick you into revealing personal and financial information. So let's break this down a little bit further to see how these scams work. First of all, number one, you've got phishing emails like this pretending to be from legitimate institutions. You receive an email that appears to come from a trusted bank financial institution 
or even a service provider. Like I've received so many from PayPal, or Amazon. The email looks really official with logos and language that mirrors the real institution. The hook is the email usually claims that there's a problem with your account, or there's an urgent security issue, or that you've even received unexpected money and things such as that. The email usually contains a link or an attachment asking you to verify your information or log in to fix the issues. Don't be moved by the logos and the almost official sounding information. When you click the link, it takes you to a fake website that's designed to look like the legitimate institution site. And if you enter your login details, the scammers now have access to your real account and they can siphon your money pretty quick. They can get access to other related accounts like your bank account pretty quick. The second one, which is in my mind easier to pick up on is, is fake customer service or fraud prevention calls. It's amazing how many people fall prey to this one. The way it works is fraudsters often combine the phishing emails with a follow-up phone call and they may actually pose as a bank clerk or some sort of service agent claiming that they're calling about suspicious activity on your account. They'll ask for personal details like your account number, your social or passwords to verify your identity. And the, the problem with these is They often feel convincing. They get professional people to act. So the voices, they sound local. They sound like an everyday person you speak to. And they're so convincing because they reference the same issue mentioned in the email. The next one is called SMS phishing or smishing. The way it works, it's similar to email phishing. You're going to get the text message claiming to be from your bank. And the message might say your account has been locked or they could say unusual activity has been detected and you're urged to click again a link to resolve the issue. For example, I received one the other week urging me to log in to track something that had been sent from an institution and I really wasn't expecting anything to be sent. And it was from an institution I was familiar with, but the institution was abroad. You see, that link will often take you again to a fake site and it will connect you to a scammer posting as customer service. Clicking the link could not only lead to a fake site, but it could also infect your phone with malware. And that's a regular. For these crazy people, they try to get into your phone with malware and you wouldn't even know because it's in the blink of an eye in seconds. The next one is the fake transaction or invoice scam. You receive an email saying that a large transaction has been made from your account, the logo will be there and you're gonna panic, panic will set in and you're encouraged to click on a dispute this charge button. Well, if you click on the dispute this charge button, you are going to have your personal emails or personal details as well whatever those may look like just absorbed and before you know it your bank monies have been siphoned pretty quick others include a fake job offer payment request they ask you to set up your bank details for a direct deposit again fake i've heard of two people through a friend who have been spoofed by this. In fact, they lost thousands. Actually, I know one personally and another distant and they were spoofed and they gave the accounts because they thought they had just gotten a job and they didn't want to annoy the employer. So they gave the information. The other ones that I won't spend too much time on are spoofed email addresses and domains The scammers create email addresses that look similar and legitimate to yours. They could even use your email as the from. It's that crazy. So when you do things like this and, you know, when they do this and you notice, oh, it's an email from my domain, 
you put your guard down, but it's actually not from your domain. It's fake. And they're able to send you messages, making it look like it's from the same domain as yours, the same company as yours. So these sites, they look so convincing that users will it willingly input personal information. The final one I'll talk about is the overpayment and refund schemes. Uh, these are scams that send an email to you claiming you're overpaid on an account and they ask you to click a link to process in the refund. The promise of receiving money, of course, is going to entice the unwitting and suck them into the, the scam. And instead of receiving money, these scammers steal your banking information. So you always need to protect yourself, my friends. Always check the source and make it a rule of thumb to not click on links. You can do a quick Google search. Some of you would have gone to this video because you put in some keywords to look for the specific sentences that I've used in this video. And that is an example, my friends, of, of what you should do. You should do some research before clicking. In fact, don't click set up two-factor authentication on your account and beware of these urgent, urgent, you gotta act now. And those are usually the worst and usually the huge culprits, those requiring action like now or urgent or things like that. So my friend, I hope this gave you some ideas into the scams, the phishing, the bad stuff that is happening on the web. It's still there. They're still in the business of scamming. They're still in the business of making a killing from poor unsuspecting individuals. So don't be one of them. Be smart. Don't click and do your research is what I'll say. Okay. You take care and thanks for joining. Bye for now.